Hey guys, Chris and the Ultimate Recycler. I'm in my shed this afternoon and I've just finished a project and I'm thinking, what will I do next? And I remember reading a comment on my recent video about how cluttered this place was. And Wayne, I think Wayne Day said, why don't you take one item a week out of that emergency storage shed and you might get somewhere. He makes a good point. So maybe I should commit to a video every week of something out of that shed on top of all the other projects I'm doing. I don't know. I'll try it. If I miss a week, it doesn't matter. Um, I think it's good to have goals like that. And again, if you don't quite get there, one box every second week is better than what I've been doing. Let's go and have a look and grab something. I could also challenge myself to get one item a week out of the carport and one item a week out of my shop storage shed. But, you know, let's not get ridiculous. Um, I did, I still laugh at the comment I got from someone that said, hang a sheet up so you can't see it. That's like, you know, sticking your head in the sand. Um, yeah, I, I, it's not, this doesn't haunt me. This doesn't traumatise me. This excites me. So, and a few of you suggested that, you know, well, you're actually saying you can do it. We, you know, we saw you do your big yard clean up and we think you can manage it. Well, it's, it's not like that. I think I might have given the wrong impression. I do have to do all this, but I don't have to do it for any particular deadline. I have the rest of my life. Admittedly, I'm bringing in new stuff all the time as well. So it would be nice to have a bit of room in here to actually do stuff. So let's start. One item. First one to grab. Well, I'm right in the doorway now. What's first? This one here. This is a, I think it's a surround sound amplifier or something like that. It's not in the very good good condition. It's quite rusty. There's a fair chance I'm going to scrap it anyway. We will just check it on eBay to make sure it's not valuable. Sitting on top of it is an, an enormous lump of lead. It's not enormous in physical size, but I can't lift that, and that's with my good arm. So I'll move that off because that's just scrap, and I'll keep that until I might one day melt lead into ingots and sell them or something. It can go uh, aside somewhere, and we'll deal with this item. Let's get it on the bench. Okay, it's a big beast and it's been a bit neglected. Even before I got it, I think it was quite weathered. Um, it's a Yamaha Natural Sound AV Receiver RXV661. Uh, it looks like, I think it's a, a um, amplifier for a home uh, surround sound system. We better check the model number on eBay, but look at all the output plugs out there so yeah it clearly is a the central unit for a surround sound um, it must take inputs of all sorts of things and then outputs as well lots of speaker connections a switched outlet for the mains so let's check it out on ebay and see if it's really worth trying to do much with or whether we just scrap it and be done with it now it's quite rusty it was like this when I got it, so it's obviously been wet. Um, and I don't imagine it's going to be a restoration project. It's just too modern, and it's probably not a very expensive one. Let's go and have a look. Okay, I've just typed RXV661 Yamaha into the search bar, and we have 39 results. I think this is worldwide, actually. Remote controls, and yes, it did search worldwide remote controls and the units so someone here is looking for 362 someone's after 141 someone's after 71 buy it now they're in the states those three then another one for 63 none of these have sold prices are all over the shop which is consistent with ebay sellers some of them are much more ambitious than others let's have a look at completed items and I'm probably more interested if any have sold in Australia. The remotes have sold. All right, this one sold for excellent condition. Sold for $115. And that's, I think that's in Australia. The next one's in the States. Sold for $172. One sold for $141. And one sold for $186. Oh, they're all selling, but they're not bringing a great deal. Oh, this one only made $29. What's the go? Parts only. So eight bids, $29. It's in the States, but let's have a look at the listing, see what they said. Um, parts, 
does not power on as sold as is with no guarantees untested untested but he knows it doesn't power on interesting okay um what does that tell me well it tells me they're not worth a great deal they're fairly common let's close that page uh they are selling if they're in good condition by the looks of this so maybe i should open it up and just have a quick look and see if it's going to work these are slightly different models they do sell all right, so we won't scrap it just yet, even though it's a bit rusty. I'll open the case up, we'll have a look, and maybe we'll give it a test. And if it goes, we might be able to sell it cheap in the shop. We'll get much better than scrap value anyway. Okay, let's check this out. I don't have a cord for it either, but the cord won't be a problem. Let's open the cover and see what it's like inside. Okay, what's it look like in here? it's rather dirty it's very dirty actually it's been neglected for a long time what's that what that's a wire that's been cut is it oh no they're just they're just used to as retaining the loom um oh actually i said i didn't have a cord for it the cord's been cut off so someone snipped the cord off which means that for us to test it we're going to have to rewire the cord for a start uh is it worth it quite bad rust along the front there and there's a chance that the cord was cut off it because it had a fault if it was a vintage unit yes i'd be definitely interested in fixing it up but a modern unit that are obviously pretty common that i don't have a remote for yeah i don't know if it's worth the hassle I mean, not all my jobs are economically viable, but I need to be able to get something out of them, like restoring some history back to use or something that's useful for me. I don't think this one actually has either of those boxes ticked. Okay, well, where does the cord go? The cord just goes into there. I'll see if I've got a cord that will plug onto that plug. And if I have, I'll plug it straight in and we'll fire it up and just see what happens. Okay, let's see if we can wangle this plug out of here. That was easy. And will it come through the clamp? There we go. All right, we'll just attach that to an end of a cord I've got here, which... um. We'll just quickly solder some wires up and insulate them and then we can plug it back in and give it a test. Okay, let's give this beast a test. I've got a, a cord here uh, with the power. We don't have an earth wire. It's double insulated. It never ran an earth wire. Uh, I should have a, a dim bulb tester here. I haven't actually made myself one yet, which limits the current in case there's a direct short to something. I don't even have my isolation transformer out here accessible just at the moment, so I'm going to be a bit careful what I touch. I just want to fire it up and see what happens. We are running through a power board that has a, a throw-out switch if there is a direct short, and there's also a circuit breaker on my fuse box. But it's not ideal. I need to build myself a dim bulb tester. Anyway, let's turn her on and see if we have any smoke or any action. Okay, we have power there. Where's our main switch here? Okay, we have absolutely nothing. What's this master on? Oh, there we go. All right, so we have an on-off main zone. Whoops, there's a relay just clicked in. That's probably a good sign. I think relays normally click in a few seconds afterwards to connect the speakers if everything's okay. So the fact that the relay clicked is probably a good sign. The display's lit up. Um, we have things responding. So that's good. It might actually be in working condition. What do we got here? DVD movie, viewing, music, disc, listening, TV viewing, and radio listening. I think this, hopefully it's got a tuner in it. I assume it would do. Yes, it's got a tuner. So we can hook some speakers up and see if the radio works. It looks like it's going to go. So even regardless of it being a bit 
dirty and even a little rusty underneath I think it's worth uh, getting a proper cord in there cleaning the case up and at the very worst we can sell it for about 20 bucks and we would not get $20 worth of scrap out of it the big transformer is probably five dollars worth there's a few circuit boards but nothing particularly flash there's a big heat sink here but it's not going to weigh very much so scrap metal wise there's very little value in this I think I'm much better off putting a proper cord in it and giving it a test through some speakers. I'll give it a test first before I go to the trouble of wiring up a proper cord. But obviously there's no major electrical issues. Uh, so let's get some speakers out and see if we can actually pick up a radio station. Okay, guys, I've just put this on my workbench in my little room. I'll turn it down a little bit. It's currently playing the ABC radio. I would have loved to have given you a good blast of of country and western music or something it actually sounds really good so i've got it hooked up through my workshop speakers uh, i can't fault this thing all the controls seem to work fine i haven't plugged in other inputs but certainly the radio is magnificent it's got good volume both channels i've turned up a bit for you color religion gender uh, sexuality and so on these are real that's just through my speakers uh, up in the corner little speakers up in the corner of my room uh, a really, really poor judgment on, on the part of the age uh, to, to put that cartoon in. And so and, and I don't know why the cord was cut off this. So anyway, what I'm going to do, uh, every all as I said, all the functions seem to work well. All the buttons work. I don't know what half of them do. There's lots of program settings and, and there's heaps of input options. CD, phono, multi-channel, VCR, DVR, VOX. DVT, heaps of them, I'm not even sure what they are. Tuner, back to tuner. So it appears to be working great. I'm going to put the cover back on. We'll give it a bit of a clean up. I'm not going to worry about the rust or anything. And I'm just going to sell it in the shop for something like $30. It more than covers my time and I'll get a lot better return than I would if I scrapped it out. So there you go. We've solved it. I fair dinkum thought I was going to scrap this one. But anyway, there you go. And there we go guys, after a bit of a clean up, it looks magnificent actually, it cleaned up really nicely. I just wiped over the case with a little bit of uh, spray and wipe cleaner and then I used some Armor All. Um, it's uh, marketed for plastic and rubber but it actually does a pretty good job on steel cases, it just brings it up a bit fresher. It looks the part, I've put a new cord on it, the proper cord and it's wired in safely. So we're all good to go. I even cleaned up the back panel there a bit. And as I said, all the functions seem to work well. So I have no idea why that was thrown out in the e-waste. Perhaps the cord was badly damaged and someone just bought a new one and chopped the old cord off. I don't know, but we've saved it from the e-waste stream. Much better to have it back in circulation. Someone will love it for their shed. It might even find its way back into some sort of home theatre system. Um, it's got some amazing functions on it, but as a shed radio, it's going to kick goals. So what do you think, guys? Um, should I stick to your advice and grab something from that room each week? It'll put me under pressure. You might get a lot more videos. They, of course, may, might be shorter. Um, there might be a couple of things in one video, but I'll try and commit to one video a week. Unless I hear you all scream, no, we couldn't handle that much of the Ultimate Recycler. You guys let me know. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.